welcome to the Alice tutorial series. This is lesson number three, and today we're going to be looking at some of the commonly used properties in the objects panel. Now when we look at the properties for different objects in the world, we're not going to look at all of them. Some of them, such as sounds and texture maps, will be addressed in a future video because they work better as kind of standalone topics. But there are a lot of neat things you can do with your world if you know how to adjust the proper properties correctly. So let's go ahead and get started with examining the different properties of objects. So here on the screen, I have a default grass world open, just like you would get if you went up to File, New, and selected Grass World. There's some different parts of the screen that we haven't talked about. In particular, we haven't talked about the Events window, and we haven't talked about the Methods window down here at the bottom, and we'll get to those in future videos. What we're going to be using in this video is the Objects panel on the top left and the Details panel on the bottom left. There are three tabs on the Details panel. Methods will be open by default. You also have Function. Those are two that we'll get to in future videos. What we're going to be interested in for this tutorial is the Properties menu. So go ahead and click on the Properties tab. This time I want to go ahead and resize my window so it's a little bit easier to see. And I want to add an object as the object will help us provide examples of what the different properties are changing. So let's go to Add. Select Animals if it's not open already, and scroll over. We're going to add a chicken to our world. I'm also going to take this chicken, set him at a profile view, and resize him so that he's a little bit bigger on the screen. That being completed, I'm going to click Done. By default, there will be four items in your Objects panel. You're going to have a World Object, a Camera, a light, and ground. Each one has its own context-sensitive properties, so I can see the properties here for ground are different than for light, camera, and world. So these properties will be dependent on what you currently have selected. It's generally a bad idea to delete the camera or delete the light from a world. Actually, it's probably a bad idea to delete the ground as well. Those are three objects that are going to be in just about every world that you create. Make sure that you have the World tab selected up in your Objects panel. In the World's Details panel, you'll see all the different properties that we can adjust. We're not too concerned with variables yet. But one of the things that we can change is the atmosphere color. By default, you have this light blue screen. If I were to change this property, I can change the sky color to whatever color I'd like. I can change it to black if I want to do a night scene. Change it to red if maybe I'm doing an alien planet. Change it to a gray if I kind of want a darker scene. In fact, I can change it to any color I want by going down, selecting Other, and pulling up the color panel. So I might want a, a light pink color, hit OK, and it will change that color. I can change the sky to any color that I want. For now, I'm going to set it back to this default blue color, which I think is one of these guys. Yeah, that one right there. So I want it set to the default blue color. One of the things that will happen is as you create new colors for use, they're going to show up under the default colors list so that you can quickly change back and forth. So as you create new colors in each world, they'll be quickly available for you so that you can use them. Each world also has an ambient light color, and you can kind of think of that as the color the sun is emitting. It's set to this dark gray color by default, and for most of your worlds, you won't play with it that much. You'll probably leave it at its default. You can see the chicken, on the underside of the chicken, there's a dark gray shadow. I can adjust that shadow to white by setting the ambient light color to white, and you can see the bottom of the chicken kind of lightens up a little bit. If I want to cast a purple shadow on my object, I can change the ambient light color to purple, and you can see the world takes on this purplish tint. I can also use the same colors that I've selected for the atmosphere color. Maybe I want to use that blue color 
for the sky, from the sky, or that pink color that we came up with, the ambient light will cast just a, a shadow of light over the entire scene. I'm going to set it white for the rest of this example. You can also adjust the brightness of the light. I can make it half as bright, and you'll see the bottom of the chicken gets a little bit darker. A quarter is light. And I can even go down to other and set the light value to zero. And the world gets rather dark. You can't really ever turn off the light completely, but you can make it a little bit darker or a little bit brighter depending on the scene that you're trying to create. So it should go, uh, it should be noted at least that setting the ambient light brightness above one doesn't have too big of an impact. In general, one is as bright as your world is going to get. Fog style is also something that most scenes will benefit from. When I look at the grass, I can see the grass all the way to the horizon, and where it ends, I can see where it meets the sky, and that's a very firm line. That doesn't happen a whole lot in real life, having just a perfectly flat world like that. If I set the fog style right now from no fog to distance, you can see that line blurs a little bit. Fog style distance is impacted by these two settings right here. Fog near distance represents how far away from the camera before the fog starts to accumulate and fog far distance represents how far away from the camera until the fog is completely covering up the scene. I can take this fog far distance, which defaults to 256 meters, and move it closer if I wanted, say 100 meters. If you don't have 100 meters on your list, you can, cl you can click on Other, pull up this calculator tool, and type in 100. When you do that, you'll see the fog moves closer to our scene. That's because the fog is still accumulating at one meter, but now it's completely covering the scene 100 meters away. If I want the fog even closer, I can go to 50 meters, and that pulls the fog even closer than it was. If the fog near distance is set to one meter, and the fog far distance is set to one meter, that means the fog will completely cover the scene, and you can't see anything. I'm going to set the fog far distance back to 256 meters, which is where it's at by default. If I want the, the, the further these two numbers are apart from one another, the more gradual the fog you'll get. If I were to take the fog distance and push it out to 100 meters, you'll see the beginning of the fog pushes back and the scene is more clear for a further distance before the fog starts to accumulate. While you can do fog, by distance, I prefer the fog style of density. When you click on density, I've got it set to a fog density of 0.1 right now. You can set that to whatever number you want. And I'm not certain what the default is. And it's best to use really small numbers for fog density. If I set it to a fog density of 1, my entire screen will be covered. And even a fog density of half covers my screen. A fog density of 0.1 gives me some pretty heavy fog, but I can also set it to numbers smaller than 0.1, say 0.05, which will push the fog back a little bit further, or 0.01, which further adjusts the fog. The way fog density works is it normally will start fog right up at the start of the camera and then gradually fog out the rest of the scene. Those are two ways to set fog values in your Alice world. While you can play with the properties for camera, light, and ground, we're not going to address those in this video, but we are going to look at some of the properties for the chicken and what those mean. Color is kind of a fun property to play with. It will adjust the color of your object. Right now the chicken is set to white. I could create a black chicken, which is a chicken with no light whatsoever, or I can tint the chicken any variety of colors. This works similar to the lighting, except you'll see when I turn the chicken red, the entire chicken has the red color where light only shades it where the light is hitting the chicken. So this is a more firm way of coloring your objects. It should be noted though that on some of the objects, particularly the brightly colored objects, the color 
property might have little effect if the default colors are painted directly on the object. So for each object, you'll have to play with the color and see what it does if you want to change it. I'm going to change it back to the default white. The opacity tab is what percentage of the object is visible. 100% of the chicken is visible right now, so you can't see through it. If I were to change the opacity to 70%, we can see a little bit of the way through the chicken. We've made them slightly invisible. At 30%, the chicken has become even more invisible. And at an opacity value of zero, the object is completely invisible. Though it's still in the world, as noted by the bounding box, which still surrounds our chicken. The chicken's there, even though you can't see it. Skin texture will be addressed in a later video. Filling style is one that you probably won't play with that often. Solid is the most common way to work in your world. Personally, I've never used points. I don't see a lot of value in that. And wireframe turn, turns the object into a wireframe object. The only time I've used wireframe is when I have scenes that have hundreds of objects and the computer starts to run a little bit slow, you'll find that wireframe can speed up the running of your programs when they get a little bit more complex than what we're doing right now. Finally, the is showing property is similar to opacity, except it's either on or off. The chicken is visible, the chicken is invisible. Right now is showing is set to true. If I set it to false, the chicken disappears. This is the same as having the opacity set to 0%. A lot of times you'll use these in tandem. If you have an object that's 70% visible, you can then turn it on and off using the is showing property. So that's going to do it for the overview of the world and properties uh, tabs here in the Alice window. Lesson 3.0 two will put all of those things together and we'll be creating kind of a cool looking undersea water world so if you think you understand properties go on over to video 3.2 and follow along and let's create a scene using fog and color and light changes and see what we can do as always if you have any questions about any of the properties that you've seen here or anything that happened on the screen or something that's not working for you that you'd like to understand, go ahead and leave your questions in the comments and I will help you out any way that I can. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.